you know, so I'm catching lifts and Ubers, like every single place I'm going. And I literally almost died like four times. I'm like, how <laughs> are you people surviving here? And then I would like get to a place and then like be so frazzled and talking to people. And they're like, oh yeah, Boston drivers are the worst. They're just horrible. It's, this is just how they drive here. And I'm like, I come from a place where like <laughs> people are like, Philly has horrible drivers. And I'm like, I was scared for my life <laughs> in Boston. That is Tezra Wilkins, the host of the podcast, Who Taught You How to Drive? And today, we're going to talk about some bad drivers and the psychology behind them. Thanks for being here. Thank you. What, uh, what are you up to? What have you been doing? How, <laughs> what are you doing while we're all quarantined? Not driving, right? <laughs> 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 yes, I, I've been just working. Um, I'm fortunate enough to still be employed. <laughs> so uh, I'm a multimedia producer. Uh, so I, um, you know, do digital media for different organizations and stuff like that. So I'm still doing that type of stuff. And uh, I'm taking a break from my podcast, so that has been awesome. <laughs> so you radio girl too? I I don't. <laughs> I'm not on air at a radio station, though. That's <laughs> okay. All right, fair enough. Well, I did. I, I was lucky enough to do that. Yeah, I know that you you started in radio, right? I did I did? I, I was I was. This is crazy to think. I was 15 years old when I started in radio. Wow. One of the high schools in my in my school district had a little radio, a little 100 watt radio station. Yeah. Think about 100 watts. You have 100 watt light bulbs in your house. I know right light now. bulbs. Yes. <laughs> That's how I got my start at WPHS yeah. in uh, Warren, Michigan. I'm a Detroit kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and I got hooked on it. And then you know, over the years, I just kind of you know segued into doing TV and video stuff, and and then live events and things like that. But, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I think I always kind of wanted, like, secretly wanted to be in radio. So. Uh, when the podcast space kind of opened up, I was like, all right, I think I can try this. <laughs> I love the idea of podcasting. I think it's really great. And it's given so many people uh, an opportunity to have their voice and to talk out there. You know, I can't monetize it enough to make a living doing podcasts, but it's yeah. fun to do something like this, this yeah. side project and, and things like this, you know, maybe you can make a dollar or two here and there. It's enough to keep the lights on, maybe buy yourself a nice, you know, a, a nice bottle of brown liquor every now and then. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Anyway, that's not why you're here. You're not here to talk about that. Tell me, <laughs> but I love your idea of your podcast, though. It's what it's it's who taught it's who taught who taught you how to, how to drive? Yes. Yeah. Where'd that whole thing come from? I love it. Uh, well, I'm sure, like if you if you've driven, you've yelled that phrase at someone. <laughs> Uh, and, um, I've like, honestly, I've been, uh, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty reserved person. I'm pretty mild mannered. Um, you know, like I could say to people that I'd never use my horn, like aggressively ever as a driver. And then like, I would say like several years ago, I just started to like feel such rage while driving. And then I would always be like, who taught you how to drive? Or why are you doing this? And are you trying to kill me? <laughs> I was like, what is going on with people out here? And then I would like tell people about like some crazy happening that, you know, like would go on like on the road or something. And someone else would have like some really outlandish story or they would say something. I'm like, who taught these people how to drive? And I was like, maybe I can, you know, like, maybe I can do something with this. Like, maybe I can, you know, turn my road rage into, <laughs> like, a humorous show, you know? Yeah. Um, and I didn't want it to just be, you know, because it, it is a silly name and everything. Um, but I, I wanted it to, to also be meaningful, you know? Um, there are lots of shows um, that talk about driving and cars from, like, the aesthetic um, space. Um, but not so many that talk about like the behaviors of the people behind the wheel. And then like, you know, so like I had this chance to like 
sit right in front of someone and say like, why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> why are you texting while you're driving? Or, you know, like who taught you how to do this? Or, you know, like what makes you think that this is okay? And the things that people would say, it just opened up um, to, to so much more into like people's personalities, you yeah. know? And I was like, wow, this is, this is actually fun. Like talking to people and hearing about like, the differences in where people come from. You know, you, you say you're from Detroit. I'm sure the driving is different there than it is where I am in Philly, you know, as opposed to like Florida or, you know, like lots of other states. A hundred percent. And I'll take you a, another step. So I'm from Detroit, but I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I moved down here about 15 years ago. And the, <laughs> right, the difference between there and here. Uh, so I had, you'll, you'll appreciate this. I had this, right after I moved here, I had this very nice Southern woman. And mm -hmm. she, she asks me, she says, she goes, you're one of them halfbacks, aren't you? And I'm gonna do, I can't even do a terrible <laughs> Southern impression. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm like, a halfback, what? She goes, mm-hmm. She goes, you damn Yankees, you move all the way to Florida, you realize it's too damn hot, and you move half back and wind up here in Charlotte. <laughs> like, that is awesome. Not right. Not, I'm actually here intentionally, but I love that. I thought that was really funny, but people are different everywhere they go. And clearly, as you found out, that transcends into car. Yeah. And then especially for me, like I said, in Philly, Philly is um, such a melting pot of so many other places, you know, so people come from the surrounding areas, the tri-state area, people come from across the country, people come from other countries, and they're all like <laughs> driving under Philadelphia law, <laughs> but not really, you know? So um, yeah, it, it just, it gave me like this entryway to explore a lot of different things um, that connected to society, you know, uh, when you talk about uh, safety, you know, like that was another main reason for me doing the show was like, I wanted to kind of yell at people and ask them why they're doing this without being, you know, like beating them over the head, you know, like sure. to, you know, like, oh, you have to do this and you shouldn't do this. I wanted it to be more reflective, you know, so people would say, wow, you know, like maybe the reason that I have so much rage when I'm driving is because, you know, I'm not managing my own time properly. And then, you know, that makes me late. And then I lash out at other people or, you know, like lots of these different things. You have this great combination of, of cars and enthusiasts, but then there's also a lot of psychology in this too. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. Um, I, I actually was a, I was a psych major in undergrad. And, I, and like I said, I'm-, I'm I wondered, really... I was going to ask you about that because you <laughs> listen to some of your podcasts and like some of it's like really deep. I'm like, we're yeah. just car guys, man. We just, just yeah. want to match the gas pedal, but. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, because like I said, it's, it's just so much there to unpack, you know, from something that's so simple. You know, we do news articles about crazy news issues and stuff. Um, you know, like in how things like technology, you know, like influence how we interact and engage with people now. You know, like, so they're testing, you know, trucks, <laughs> like trailer, <laughs> trailer trucks, um, you know, like with without drivers now, you know, like like that we have the technology for that now so you know like if you're upset with truck tr tr <laughs> truck drivers now like imagine when there's nobody in the seat <laughs> there are certain cliches about you know uh, stereotypes of certain people driving certain cars but there's got to be some truth based in those right at least to a, to a start yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, and actually, it's it's funny because um, sometime after I started the podcast, I came across this book called Traffic um, by a guy named Tom Vanderbilt. And he talks about essentially <laughs> what my podcast is about, you know, so like the behaviors that people have around like driving in cars. And a lot of that is because um, you know, like cars are, they're like that unconditional figure in our lives, you know, they're there for everything. Like once they're there, <laughs> like they're there, you're, you know, like if you're in a car by yourself, if you're talking, if you have to prepare for a meeting, if you're, you know, like have to prepare for a call or something, if you have to cry, like all these things happen in that car, you know, like, um, and then that becomes like an extension of you, you know, like when, it starts to break down or do something. You're like, come on, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't go on me. Like we're in this together. You start talking to it and then it becomes like this part of you, you know? So then you, 
you start to defend it in the same way that you would like a child or a family member. 100%. You, you personify, we begin to personify our cars. Yes. We mm-hmm. completely do. Do you name your cars? Actually, I don't, which is like so funny. It's like surprising to me because I'm like, everybody has a name for their car. And I don't know if it's just because I'm like indecisive, but I have no name. <laughs> I've never had a name for a car. I can't feel bad for you. I don't do it either. Um, really? A lot oh. of my friends do. I've never done it. I've had one car in all of my years of driving. I had one car that, yeah. uh, that had a name, but I didn't give it the name. My friends did. It was, uh, it was Jethro. Jethro was one of my race cars years and years ago. Yeah. Um, and he was, uh, it, was a, it was a Mazda Miata we turned into a, into a race car. And he was, he was Jethro because um, it was, we, we saved him from the country. He was just this beat up old car that was dead, basically abandoned on the side of the road. I bought it for $500 and then we resurrected it. But my friends always, were, that's like, that's like, it's like, like Jethro Bodine from the Beverly Hillbillies. So he called him <laughs> Jethro the Hillbilly spec Miata. <laughs> Oh that, man, yeah. That was it. But I didn't I'm not I'm with you. I'm not really a namer. To me, as much of a car person as I am, to me a car is, especially a race car, but I think any car really, is a tool for getting a job done. Um gosh, it sounds so impersonal. I love all my cars, but like for I've got I've got multiple cars. Like I've got I, I have a I have a Jeep, that's my daily driver, right? Uh, but then I've got a sports car and then I've got a motorcycle. So, I mean, I've got, you know, I got stuff and then I've got, you know, I've, I've had in the past, I've had a pickup truck or an, or a big SUV that I could tow with. So I could yeah. tow the race car to the track, but, but each of those vehicles kind of each had a, a purpose. I don't care what it is. It's to get you to the, to the place at, at the end of the day. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I used to have a Kia soul and uh, you know, I mean, talk about a craptastic little car. But it was a perfect little daily driver. And all my car guy friends, they were all ready to throw me into the garbage can. You can't drive mm-hmm. a Kia Soul. Yeah, I can. Sure, it's a perfectly good car for what I need, for purpose. I'm not yeah. going to go out on a date in the thing, you know? But <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I totally understand. And I actually had, um, and I didn't look at it in that way before, you know? So I would always be like, you know, because I'm a person, I just had one car, you know, like, I, like like you said, I just use it as a tool. I'm just like, I have to get to work or wherever I have to go. Um, and I don't like driving that much because people are crazy, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but um, I had I'd interviewed um, this guy for my show, a guest, and he, I think he said he had like maybe 20 some odd cars. And <laughs> I was like, how do you have this many cars? And he said the same thing that you said, you know, he kind of broke it down like, Well, you know, like if I just want to cruise one day, then I might, you know, get in this little bum (laughs) CRV that I have or, you know, like if I want to drive fast then I'll, you know, get in this car. And I was like, wow, I never really looked at it, you know, in that way, you know, but I think everybody looks at um, a car as some type of utility or tool. It's just what type of tool, you know, like what (laughs) are they using it for? You know, so for you more of a utilitarian purpose but for some people you know it could be a tool for them to look more douchebaggy like right. <laughs> you know like, right. they're like yo if I get this you know Lambo you know with the doors and you know like all this stuff souped up then you know I'm gonna look a certain way if but I that doesn't you know like but once people get to know you then like the car is irrelevant you know right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if I show up in a pair of jorts and white New Balance we got bigger issues <laughs> Right. <laughs> you're, in, you're in Philly, right? Yes. Yes. Have you been to the Simeon Museum? I haven't. No. Got to go. You've got to go. So to Dr. Simeon up. is awesome. He, Dr. Fred Simeon is, uh, he's like the super famous neurosurgeon, but he's also this ultimate car guy. The story I remember was that when his dad passed away, his dad had, his dad had four cars. He left him four cars and $8,000. And from here now, he's this world famous neurosurgeon and an amazing car collector. So I've been to his his place there doing an event, probably ten years ago now. Uh, but then about three years ago, I was at the Amelia Island Concorde d'Elegance. If you ever get a chance to go, go. I highly recommend it. It's awesome down in Jacksonville, Florida, outside of Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And I was working for Alfa Romeo for that week, 
And he is a huge Alfisti, a big Alfa Romeo fan. And, and they brought him in. Alfa actually brought him in as a keynote speaker mm -hmm. for an event. And I got the opportunity to spend about a half an hour with him driving the new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Wow. And he was driving the car and we're driving around and he's just telling me stories. I'm just like, and, and you made a point earlier about how it, it's, it, it doesn't matter where we are in society. When we're in that car, we're all the same person. And I just loved the guy. Like I'd even been to his place before and I knew his backstory and I'm trying not to get too, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I didn't want to get all fanboy on him, but, <laughs> but, but he was super awesome and he was such a nice guy. And he was thanking me at the end of, of the trip saying yeah. thank you for your time and thanks for talking with me about it. And I just, Wow. I'm like, who walked out of there the better recipient of that, of that experience? I would yeah. claim it's me, but he sure made it feel like it was him. And that was special. Yeah. That, I mean, and, and that's like a part of the car driving experience though, you know, like you are able, because you're in such close proximity to people, you know, like you can't escape unless you're going to like <laughs> jump out of a, you know, flying car or something. But, you know, like you're there with a person, a very intimate space and you can have, you know, like you can, you can drop those barriers, you know, and a lot of times people talk to you about things that they wouldn't talk to, <laughs> to other people about in that space, you know, and, you know, like you hear that a lot from rideshare drivers and taxi cab drivers. They're like, you know, <laughs> like these people are like pouring out their hearts and souls to me or you know talking about these things because you know one because that level of intimacy is there it's like forced intimacy in a sense um and then also because like in some instances you won't even have to see these people again so. <laughs> yeah, you know both of those are great reasons why it's okay to run your mouth inside of an uber right <laughs> You know, there's a lot of, there's, you know, th there's different driving in different areas uh, of the country. What have you found? Like, what areas are maybe better or worse? Um, I don't, like, I've, I've only been a couple of places where I have actually been driving. Uh, <laughs> um, last year uh, was, like, pretty horrible for me, though. It was, it was funny because I, I hadn't, I wasn't a rideshare person because I would just drive everywhere. I'm like, you know, I just drive myself. Um, and I went to Boston, we flew to Boston, um, for actually, um, the PRX Google podcast creator program, um, that our show won. And, you know, we went out there and, you know, so I'm catching lifts and Ubers, like every single place I'm going. And I literally almost died like four times. I'm like, how? <laughs> are you people surviving here and then I would like get to a place and then like be so frazzled and talking to people and they're like oh yeah Boston drivers are the worst they're just horrible it's, this is just how they drive here and I'm like I come from a place where like people are like Philly has horrible drivers and I'm like I was scared for my life in Boston was it because of the drivers on the road or was it the Uber drivers or was it both? I think it, I think it was a, a mix of both. Yeah. A mix, it was a mix of both. Yeah. People, some people take too many chances. I'm, I'm like not that person. Yeah. Like I, I'm not taking chances. I may take chances by myself, but I'm not taking chances with other people in the car with me. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. I, I was uh, else's life on my hands. I was up in Detroit a couple of years ago and I had, uh, I had dinner with my brother and it was wintertime. So it was snowing mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm just, I'm grabbing an Uber back to my hotel and it's snowing pretty good. And you know, I've had a couple of beverages, so I'm like, Hey man, I'm comfortable. This is perfect. I love this. Is, this is exactly how this is supposed to work. And I get in the back seat, and the guy's like, yeah, yeah, great. I'm like, all right, this is where we're going. And he gets onto the expressway to, to get me back. And it's going to be about a 25 minute drive back to the, back to the hotel. And so I decide it's going to be a perfect time to get a little video chat in with my family, right? So I get on the video chat and I'm chit chatting with the family and I could feel the car wiggle a little bit. Oh, and I thought, this isn't going to be good. And I just kept digging, you know, and I'm, I'm chit chatting again and I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm aiming the phone out the window. I'm like, yeah, take a look. It's snowing and everything out there. It's cool. Yeah. Next thing I know, swear to God, Woo! Round he goes, and with with me live on video chat with my family, we do a full three sixty on the expressway. And now he wasn't going full uh, highway speed because of the weather, 
but holy crap, man. I mean, it was, yeah, it was funny. My kid, my kid's funny. My kid jumps on him. He, he, he yells out, code brown, code brown. <laughs> what is that? Code brown means you poop like, your pants. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. There you, uh, go. you can take that. Do you have kids? Man. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. That's, Not yet. Keep, keep it that way. You got, <laughs> keep it that way. Mine's 13 right now. And you were talking earlier about, how about you know, some kids, how they don't even, some don't even care about getting their mm-hmm. driver's license. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mine, mine did for a long time. He was really excited and he races go-karts uh, occasionally oh, okay. too. So, uh, so he's actually at 13 years old. He's been racing now for five years. He started racing carts when he was eight. Wow. And so he's a better driver, at least better in control, and at least has better situational awareness than most people that you and I are in traffic with. <laughs> but in the last year or so, he's really gotten into video games way more than I kind of mm-hmm. hoped that he would. And now he's getting to the point where he's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to go anywhere with you, dad. I'm like, I don't need to. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I was like reading articles and they were saying, you know, because of and not only because of like ride shares, but also because um, people are so accessible um, without you having to like leave and go somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. you can go online, you can do video conference, FaceTime. Yeah. Um, so they don't even have to like <laughs> be with their friends, oh. you know, physically anymore. No, you know? no, it's crazy. Like even right now, literally as you and I are recording this right now, he's in the other room, right? <laughs> And he's got, I'm not making this up. So he's got, he's got a, a, a little MacBook that they give him for school that mm-hmm. he's not supposed to be doing personal things on, but he does it anyway, <laughs> right? So he's got his little MacBook. He's got my laptop over there and he's got his phone. He's like this triple screen internet wizard playing some, I don't know yeah. what video games he's playing between all of them, but he's using it. Like, or something. Yeah, he's got, he's got the one, <laughs> he's like, well, dad, the, the one has got my Discord channel on it and the other one's got the game on it. And then my buddies are texting me on the phone. And I'm like, <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days you're going to want to get out of the house. You're going to meet girls and it's all going to go to pot from there. So. Right. <laughs> so talk to me about some, I bet you've probably heard some pretty funny stories though about what people have, uh, in, you know, what's happened in cars, a good car stories. Do you have a favorite that sticks out? Do you have kind of your go-to one? I remember actually for myself, um, my, when, when I was younger, uh, I grew up, we were poor. My mom, I can't remember I feel like my mom probably didn't get a car until I was like in late high school or something like that. But when I was younger, uh, my aunt, she had like a couple of cars and she actually used to get in so many accidents. Um, And I remember one time uh, my mom was like watching my, my little cousin and I didn't know like the the full extent to like, you know, the accident that my aunt was in like prior to her coming to pick him up. And (laughs) so she was like coming back from like the hospital or whatever. And they had said that in the accident, like her, um, her face had gone through the windshield and she had like, you know, like shards of glass and stuff um, in her face. Uh, (laughs) So she, she comes to the house to pick up my cousin. And I think my mother knowing what my aunt would look like told me to go to the door uh, <laughs> and I get down there and open the door and it's like this person with like bandages all over their face and like you just see like the the holes <laughs> the eyes and mouth and I like screamed at the top of my lungs and just like ran my behind <laughs> back upstairs and that was like so traumatizing for <laughs> me as like a young child I'm like how is the mummy <laughs> coming to my house <laughs> it's yes. funny we were all influenced I think by vehicles earlier in our life and I've always told the story about my my dad when my dad was young he was a car guy when he was mm-hmm. 19 years old he bought his first brand new car he was uh you know he'd, he'd been a paper boy and been saving up his money and he was able to buy a 1965 Plymouth Barracuda Formula S with a factory Hurst four-speed stick in it awesome super cool car <laughs> It was fancy. Yeah, right. The day my dad died, my dad, my dad went from that to down, 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 down. And my dad died as the apparently proud owner of a Buick Rendezvous, which, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, a Buick Rendezvous, which was, the, uh, which was the sister car of the equally awful Pontiac Aztec. 
So yes, yeah. I remember the rendezvous. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want one of those. <laughs> hey, listen, I know you said you were taking a break from it, but if folks want to find out a little bit more about you, where do we track you down? Yeah, they can um they can go to our website, www.howtodrivepod. That's with the number two. Um, so you can reach us there. You can find just information about the podcast. Um, if you want to subscribe, you can go wherever you get your podcast from. So Apple, Google, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, all of that stuff. Um, you can find us there. Who taught you how to drive? Uh, <laughs> so if you want to rant with us, get angry. <laughs> I'm with you hundred percent. Feel better about the way that you drive. <laughs> Every time I see somebody do something ridiculous now, you know, that's uh, not only am I going to yeah. blurt that out, but I'm going to think of you as well. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And I appreciate you checking in on the show. Now, no matter which venue you're watching this on, make sure you like, or you subscribe, or you follow us so that you never miss another episode. And I'll join you next time for another foot to the floor episode of The Driving Show. I'm John Hammer.